Welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my panelist for today is Janet Corsi, and our guest is Christopher Larkin. The topic of the show is from create or from concept to fruition. Uh, Christopher, please tell us a little bit about yourself and where did you get the inspiration to become an author? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I was a lorry driver for a lot of years. And and what is a lorry driver? Sorry? What is a lorry driver? Uh, HGV vehicles, the big tankers, the big, the big uh, vehicles that go take loads all over the place. Oh, okay. So, uh-huh. yeah. All right. What's Great. called an art- articulated in this country. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and yeah, I, I drove that. Uh, unfortunately, I had a heart attack back in 2007. Oh. And they, they, um, the driver and vehicle scene, like vi- driver and vehicle licensing people took my license off me, which is what they do. It's a standard thing. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I developed uh, degenerative osteoarthritis in my spine. Oh. while I was off for a year and uh, unfortunately couldn't go back to the lorries. Oh. Um, uh-huh. So that's when you decided to become an author? Yeah, basically the my uh, my wife and myself we lived on a narrow boat for a lot of years. On a um, what boat? Sorry. What kind of a boat? A narrow boat. It's a long thin uh, like the old traditional boats that go around the canal system in England taking loads oh. before the, the days of the railway. And I think you have a picture of that on your yeah. Facebook page. Sorry? You have a picture of that on your Facebook page, I believe. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. And so you can see all the pictures behind me. Yeah. Uh-huh. My wife drew. Uh, it's like my little uh, wall of characters. Uh-huh. Cool. That's well, so anyway, you lived on that boat. How was that? That was had to be fun. Oh, this was fantastic. Yeah, we had so many good times. Um, you know, I'd, I'd come home um, on a Friday night after a week away in, in a lorry, and then we just start the boat up and untie it and go and just anywhere, just a weekend away, you know, oh. on a riverbank somewhere or find a pub. And, you know, it was just a, like every weekend was a holiday. Yeah. Oh, that must have been nice. Yeah, so that would gorgeous. be fun. Yeah. And you're right in the middle of nature, so you know, we've had snakes on the side of the boat. We had a, a little adder. So uh-huh. they're not very big in this country, but but we had one crawl on the boat, and then we had a um, when we had a flood once, we had a, a, a vole. Yeah. Try to climb out of the water onto the boat, uh-huh. and I, I actually caught him, took him through the flood, and put him back on dry land basically and a little thing but uh yeah it's, it's just it's nature you know you're living with um the forces of nature basically. yeah right yeah. yeah but that would be fun so did you grow up there in in great britain yes yeah i always been well yeah i grew up i, I was born in 1962 uh, oh you're still a, just a kid uh, all right <laughs> You're still just a kid then. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel like it, unfortunately. <laughs> my, uh, my back problems. That'll uh, do it. Give me a lot of a lot of pain, and the the painkillers that I take it's uh, called ketamine, um, which is supposedly a horse pill uh-huh. for horses. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So. I can take my painkillers and I'm asleep all the time. Oh, yeah. Or I can not take them and be in pain. So. Well, I will tell you one good thing about this. We just did a show last week about someone who – well, we did a show on, on, on people and their addictions in the past or their mental personalities or whatever, you uh-huh. know. And yeah. a lot of them were on drugs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or alcoholics, or had other mental issues. So maybe that's where your creativity is coming from. <laughs> yeah, it could be a good so, thing. I say, it, all, it all started with the grandchildren back in two thousand and nine. Bought uh, a teddy. Oh, they bought me a little teddy bear in a box. Uh huh. That had got a, a Coast Guard uniform on. Uh huh. Um, and I thought that was appropriate, and I thought, well, you know, I want to make it mean something. 
So yeah. I devised all the characters for the books. Inclu- That's where Captain Griswold came from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You see them? You see them? Yeah. How cute. Sorry? How cute. How adorable. Um, that's the, the Griswold book, and that's the new one I've just brought out. Raise now, it a little higher. What's the new one? Uh, it's called My Grand's Garden. Okay. Uh-huh. Basically, when I was a young boy, um, I had I go up to my grandparents every weekend and uh, and spend time with them. Uh-huh. Um, and go to their allotment. They used to do a lot of planting of stuff, you know, taters and carrots and veg. Yeah. Um, so we'd spend a lot of time at the, at the allotment. And it was a, for me, it was a, a time of imagination. Um, and I used to swing on the trees and play, you know, like I was Air Force bomber or something like that. You know? Sure. <clears throat> that's, where, that's where the imagination comes from, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, just, I just did what I wanted to do, you know. Um, and I've used my my memories of, of that time of, of going to the to the garden to write uh, that that first story. Mm-hmm. That's, it's called. It's entitled My Grand's Garden, and the first book is called A Plum Job. Okay. A plum Basically, job. <laughs> a plum job. Yeah. What's a plum job? Well. A plum is the fruit, obviously, you know right, that. Right, right. Um, and in England, if you get a plum job, it's said to be very easily. Very uh, easy. We actually use that slang uh, here. Yeah, we yeah. Like, like, A bit like yours, uh, James. <laughs> right, right. Very much like James's. <laughs> very plum job. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, this, this is a plum job, I have to say. I really like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, they, that, was, that was the... the uh, thought behind those stories. I've got a couple more. And I've, got, I've got quite a few stories in pieces, in little bits and bobs at various stages, at plot stage or synopsis stage or whatever. Um, and I just keep getting one out, running, you know, running it through and, and see where we go. So you but have a... Unfortunately, now my wife, Tina, <coughs> excuse me, my wife, Tina, She's had to uh, to stop drawing for me. She's yeah. got carpal tunnel problems in her in her hands, yeah. and she's had to stop drawing. So oh. who's doing so the illustrations I, now? Sorry, who's doing your illustrations for you now? It's uh, a, a young lady called Sue Phipps. Uh, mm. She's well, she's, she's not necessarily a younger lady. She's seventy years old. Oh. Uh-huh. She's brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Uh-huh. And again, I uh, I've put a, a couple of the newer characters onto my Facebook page so people can get used to them as they're coming through. Uh huh. Transfer from one to the other, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we I just found out when speaking to you earlier that we have a mutual friend via the internet that you actually speak yeah, to quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, Pat Ritter in ah. in Australia. <laughs> I speak to Pat on on Facebook, message him uh, most weeks, basically. Yeah. Um, he runs his books by me or on whatever, you, and I run mine by him. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we just chat. Yeah. Uh, I've got quite a few friends in America. Yeah. Uh, another guy, who, uh, Gaston Sanders. I don't know if you know him. No. He's in Houston, in Texas. No, not for uh, me. He, he's unfortunately been very, very ill. Yeah. I don't know whether he, he listens to your program, but if he does, I'd like to say, you know, hope you get better. Yeah, he's, yeah. absolutely. Unfortunately, the big C, so I'm hoping he gets better. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got so many, so many. Um, Christine Hills, I don't even know her. I don't remember Christine Hill, no. Uh, she's a she's a, a coach, basically. She teaches website stuff no yeah main, my my i mainly uh, my whole focus is mainly with authors i know a lot of authors um yeah. but beyond that not too many people other than local in las vegas or henderson so but yeah mainly just authors well let me just say i i admire you for why children's books as opposed to say a novel about war or something <laughs> um <coughs> 
I think it was because it was to do with the grandchildren. Uh-huh. Um, and, I, and I found it so easy to use their character to develop the characters of the story, if you like. Uh-huh. Um, you know, well, the grandchildren, the three grandchildren. Um, the oldest one is, is Kayla, the granddaughter. Uh-huh. And she likes the, the brownies. You know, I, I don't know if you have that sort of thing in America. Brownies, Girl um, Scouts. Like Girl Scouts and yeah. stuff like uh-huh. that. Yeah, they yeah. have it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Into that. So um, I called her R. Kayla, which is the the, like the leader of the brownies. Uh-huh. Um, and my uh, eldest grandson, Dylan, um, I called him Dylan of... Oh, yeah, Dylan of Dockyard, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the policeman. So Dylan of Dockyard, yeah. So you basically um, incorporate your grandchildren into your stories. That's it, yeah, yeah. Oh, how um, clever! That, that, it's all the family that's the characters, basically. Yeah, I did that with one story. Actually, I have a book coming out May nineteenth. We're actually doing a festival here in or an event here in Las Vegas, and uh, with, which will involve twenty authors. And um, in my story, the main one of the main characters is actually my mother's name. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So it yeah. is. It's easy using, you know, to use the family and use their character. I find I'm. Yeah. A, I'm obviously. Uh, I'm. I won't say I'm a a, a skilled writer at, at any stage. You know, it was just something that I liked and I I wanted to do at the time. Yeah. Uh, because I couldn't go back to driving lorries. Um, I sort of fell into it and and tried to make it become a career but uh it's it's you know it's hard work as you well know james oh yes oh yeah yeah you it, never know you never really know when something's going to take off either you can be pushing something for several years and then all of a sudden it just takes off right so yeah. that's what you yeah. got to hope for and that's we're going to talk about the, that in a few minutes actually i want we're going to a little bit more about you and then we're actually going to go from how you started and where we can go with it from here. And one of the things I wanted to find out is is that you have three books about Captain Griswold. Where can those books be found? Uh, they're on my Facebook page, which is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Chris Lakin books. Can, uh-huh. you, can you get that? Uh-huh, yes. Yep. And how, do you, how are you spelling your name? It's C H R I S L A K I N. L A K I N. Lakin. Okay. All right. And you also um, are. And do you have an author's web page? Yeah, it's. It's Chris Lakin author dot wordpress dot com. WordPress, okay. Okay, we'll write that down here. That's that's a bit of an old one, actually, but uh, it's, well... well but it's, it's good to have page. that. You always need to have an author's page, so it doesn't yeah. matter where it is. It's just it's important to I've have got, that. I've that. got the author's page on Amazon as well, you know, the, uh, the one that you get yeah. with that. So everything's available there. Good. So your books can also be found on Amazon? Yes, yeah. Marvelous, marvelous. Amazon's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, what's the title of the books, the the children's books? Sorry. What are the titles to the three children's books? Uh, it's obviously Captain Griswold with his crew and friends okay. is the main title. All right. And then I've got um, the first one is Who's Who on the Crew. Oh, oh that's, that's cute. cute. Yeah. Who's Who on the Crew? Who's Who on the Crew? That, okay. That, Sort of goes through all the characters and what the what the little things are and the little traits and tells everybody what they're for, you know. Uh huh. Um, and the second one is is uh, <sighs> see if you only write one book, you only have one thing to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I'm in luck. <laughs> Uh, the, the Coal Eaters is the, the second one. Okay. Um, it sounds quite nasty, but basically while we was on the boat, we had 
uh, a little family of moles, water moles. Okay. Um, that were stealing the coal. We, you know, we had a, a, like a, a shed full of coal. Uh huh. On the boat, um, and they were biting the, the sacks and taking little bits of it to put in the nest. And apparently, the land uh, they line all their nest with, with coal. With coal. Wow, so the coal eaters. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. All right, and what's the third book? Um, so that was that one. And then the third one is uh, a trip to Lowbrough Market. Okay, what is that about? Um, it, it's basically um, Captain Griswold uh, taking a load of veggies, uh, carrots, peas, taters, whatever, to market, and my, my youngest grandson is, is Riley, uh -huh. um, and he's we've made him a farmer. So he's got this big farm, and he, he sort of contracts Captain Griswold to take these stuff in the winter to farm, to, to the market, I should say. Uh -huh. um, and he has to get them there before they get damaged with snow and stuff. You know, the, the English winters... You know, it's biting cold and freezing. So yeah, right. um, and that's that's the that job, and he gets that there. Okay, that sounds cool. Yeah. Well, so it's kind of even life lessons. Yeah. Too. Yeah. 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 Oh. You know. That's, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to start talking about, first of all, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, and my panelist is Janet Corsi, and our guest is Christopher Lakin. Um, and the topic is from concept to fruition. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, Chris, is um, you when you started this, you just wanted to write a story for your grandkids based on the teddy bear that they all gave you for Christmas. Yeah. So yeah, how did you yeah. how did you get how did you start the process of writing this? Did you ask someone what to do, or did you just start writing it? Uh, no, I I, uh, I came home from a, a, a run to Bristol, right down the south of England. I was on a, on the lorry, and I came home about four thirty in the morning with this idea that I'd been developing on my way down to Bristol and back. And I, I was spinning it through my head and, and, you know, how can I make it right and how can I make it? And I came out about 4.30 and just sat down with a, a pad and started writing. And I had a, a few days off just after that. And I just wrote. And I, I came out actually as nine stories. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that I'd wrote in this little period of time off. Uh -huh. And I've got the first three are out and there's the rest to come over time, you know, well, we're hoping it, it takes off and they start, start selling a little bit more. Well, but that's nice. We're going to talk about that whole aspect here in a minute as well. So it was really just from driving back and forth. We have another gentleman that was on the show, John Bragg. He uh, was an attorney who used to go back and forth every day to work, or still does, an hour each way. And, um, you know, he developed his story ideas by, well, from being on the road. So it's interesting yeah. how when you've got free time, you, you know, you're driving, you might as well think of something you can, you know, make useful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although England's only a little country, it takes us a few hours to get around it. Yeah. Uh, especially yeah. Especially you know, 44 ton thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've covered about the country, I think, and uh, used the road to, to come up with new ideas. Okay. That's a great idea. All right, so you started writing it down. So then after you started writing it down, when you started thinking about the publishing process, what was your next step? Did you get it edited? Did you try to find an illustrator? What, was your, what did you do next? Well, I, quite honestly, James, I knew absolutely nothing about <laughs> well, we, the industry right. at all. Most people you know? don't. That's why yeah. we're talking about this, because this is a, a big help. I was a driver. You know, yeah. was, right. And... Uh, uh, I had to start learning. I went to the library. I got the books. I, I went online and found some seminars and stuff and uh, people to talk to um, and just basically started learning about publishing, obviously yeah. wanting to be 
tradition of published through, you know, an agent and a, and so, a publisher. So your first first step was you tried to find an agent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many um, how many query letters did you send out? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let me tell you something. We had a guy on the show, Fred uh, Rayworth. He sent out 367 queries before he found an, an agent. I mean, before he found a publisher. Yeah. He, he was determined, I'm not going to self-publish. I'm going to get... But it, after 367 rejections, he finally found one that said yes. Yeah. I went to, I went to a... Uh, there's a company in, in England called The Writer's World. Okay. Uh -huh. And they have a... Um, like a seminar weekend in in York, the big university in York, and I went I went to that uh, oh, some years ago now, and I met a, a gentleman called David Gorkran. Okay. He's an Irish gentleman. Um, he's got quite a few books out. Um, he, he's, he's big on sort of um writing self publishers books if you know what i mean uh -huh. so books to help people self publish <laughs> and i had i sat down with him sort of one night uh and we had a, a jar or two as you do um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah we had a, a very long conversation and he he sort of led me to believe that the easiest way around it is to try and self publish and it wasn't or it shouldn't be as frightening as as people think it is, you know. Right. It is, it is a long learning curve, but at the end of the day, you've got the satisfaction of knowing that you wrote it, you've edited it, you've proofread it, and then you've got it through to the final uh, situation, for, right. you know, for the public. Right. Um, so you're sort of part of it all the way, which I'm, I'm told, although I've never been involved with it, um, as a traditionally published author, you can have little to do or no say in the final finished product. Exactly. Right. Of the way it goes and the you know, editing and what are you? Right. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want that because obviously it's all about my family. So, right. You know, if, they, if they'd have said to me, "No, you've got to have, the, can't have that character," you know, we're going to drop that character, then it would have been sort of a, no, a non-working situation for me, let's say. Yeah. It would take the heart out of it. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. so that's good that you chose to self-publish. So then after you decided to self-publish and you took these courses, did you go, your wife just said, I can do the illustrations, or how did that come about? Uh, yeah, well, we, do, we just sat down, and she's, uh, she's obviously not a qualified illustrator, the same as I wasn't a qualified author. You know, we, we sat down, and she's quite good. Uh, she's sort of um, very sort of uh, craft orientated, you know, mm -hmm. in, in what she does. She likes doing a lot of uh, puzzles, and, and she makes these, uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, and if it's anything in America, they're doing a lot of book folding now. Uh, so they'll take an old book, uh -huh. And bend it round, and then make it into a shape like a lamp or a. Oh um, no! Hand. Yeah, I've seen. She does. She does a lot of that. Uh -huh. Obviously, not much now with her hands, but you know, and she she had a go at the drawings for me, and we sort of worked it between us uh, how we wanted it to go and how I wanted it to look, and then she bought me this little fella. Aww, ah, he's adorable. He's uh, that's Captain Griswold. Um, that, that she bought me, and this look, this little one here. That's the dog. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go dog. Yeah. Uh, it's a character <laughs> in the story. Basically, we we had uh, an Alsatian dog, dog, uh, a German Shepherd, um, that was 18 years old when we lost her. Oh my. Uh, a, a boat dog through and through. She really loved it. It, it really extended her life, I think, to, uh -huh. to live on the boat, you know? Yeah. Yep. And it's, uh, it's Tigo Dog, and we always remember her as, as being that. She was lovely. Uh-huh. So now you've got it illustrated, 
and then you're going out to get self-published. Did you talk to any other authors or anything? Well, you had mentioned the one at the the event. Did you stay in contact? Yeah, I went to uh, to London for a couple of courses, and and um, the uh, oh. So, sorry yeah but that's a, okay a but so you took a couple courses yeah name. yeah you just took a t couple courses there at one of the universities i did the same thing when uh, i wanted to write i wasn't certain what to do so i took some courses at emory university in atlanta uh, actually I took eight um to learn a little bit about the industry but they weren't really so much about self-publishing they they were just about writing itself and what traditional publishers are looking for because when i started self-publishing wasn't something people fancied it. They didn't like a self-published author very well. <laughs> no, no, so, that's right. Today it's a lot it's different. It's a lot more accepted now, I think, yeah. than it used to be. Yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too. You know, we were, you just mentioned a while ago that that wasn't your specialty or your background or your training. But if you go out there and you look at the majority of the authors that are out there, including some of your best-selling authors, they weren't authors to start off no. with. You know, no. Stephen King was a janitor. Um, you had Clancy, who was in insurance. I mean, you have all the variations of people and what they did before they ever became an author. So yeah. there is no criteria for becoming an author. It's just having the creativity. Yeah. And, and right, the yeah. ability it's to put it on paper. I think. Right. I mean, if you're going to write um, something like a technical book or whatever, then you've got to know what you're doing. Right. That's right. a little different. <laughs> or a school text. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, fiction books are just about imagination, and if you've exactly. got the imagination and the way for all, and then you know, go for it. That's right. why I was. Right. Well, I'm curious. What did your wife think when you said, "Hey, honey, I'm I'm going to write children's books"? What how, What was her reaction? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> In the background, there she says, "Amazement." I think basically. Uh -huh. I think she thought I was absolutely loopy. But did, <laughs> but did she encourage you to continue with it, or did she encourage you? Oh, no, she encouraged me definitely, yeah. 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 When I told her how, how um, my ideas for the story were, were going, um, uh -huh. and I used to sort of read it to her periodically, uh -huh. uh, just to sort of get the, get the feedback, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, if I could put a funny bit in or... A, a little thing, I'd, I'd read it to her, so just to test if it's funny or not with everybody else. You know, sometimes you can laugh at something yourself, but right. it's not funny to anybody else. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah she, she was uh, right behind me, right from word go. All right, so now you've, you've got it illustrated. You Did anyone edit it, or did you get advice from someone? I know you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned uh, Pat Ritter. Did you pass it by him to see what he thought, or...? Uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, on LinkedIn as well, um, mm -hmm. basically, and I, I went on there um, and found a lady called Jackie Charlie. Okay. Was, uh -huh. uh, yeah. So someone did look at it then? Yes. Oh, yeah. I've had it edited and proofread properly, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. All right, because that's important. That's very important. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, w I would never... Um, not have done that. I, I did have it professionally edited and professionally proofread. Okay. Which obviously is, you know, it, it's a cost, but it's a cost to stop. Absolutely. Once you start, you really can't give up. Plus, yeah. if it's, if, if it, you know, if you really believe in what you have, or it doesn't even matter, you have grandkids. So just getting it out there for the grandkids had to be a treat. Oh, yeah. 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 So what did they think when they saw it in they, print? Uh, well, at first, when I told him about it, it was like, oh, okay, granddad, yeah, you know. <laughs> just just grandpa. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when when I got it finished and, and actually gave them a, a copy of the book for themselves uh -huh. um, and, and read it with them and whatever, yeah, uh, then they loved it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So What's you, you self-published on Amazon. Is that how you started? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's the only one I, could, the only one I knew then. Oh. I knew Amazon had something to do with it. I didn't know about Create Space or any of that, and certainly not about KDP or any of that. Uh -huh. So it, it, again, was just another learning curve. Uh -huh. Have you gone to um, Ingram Spark at all to uh, 
put your book on there? No, I haven't. Okay, well, that's going to be something I'm going to suggest to you. Check out Ingram Sparks. Um, they are a distributor, but they also, if you put your book with them, you can still keep it on Amazon, but if you put your book with them, you'll get international distribution. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sounds very the, and we're talking about for bookstores and stuff, like if you want to do a signing at a, I don't know what your chains are there in the UK, but here would be um, Barnes & Noble. If you d went to yeah. Barnes & Noble to do a store signing, you know, if you're in their system, they could order the book through Ingram Sparks. So yeah. that's why you, you want to check that out. Definitely. Like, but definitely keep it with Create Space or, or Amazon. You want to always do that. Well, I, I don't know because I've, I've been told recently that uh, Create Space aren't doing the distribution anymore. I don't know how true that is. Uh, somebody sort of said, you know, they're, they're, they're not carrying on as they were. I don't know. Well, what they're doing, they still do distribution of your book. For example, if I wanted to order your book, if you, if you go and you list it with Create Space, Create Space is owned by Amazon. They, Amazon owns them. So it's still going to be listed with Amazon, and you'll get that distribution through them. But I think mm -hmm. what they might be talking about is, is now for more international distribution, you want to go with Ingram Sparks. Now, yeah. KDP or Kindle is actually trying to do publishing as well, but they're still in the new phases of that. So I would still stick with the things you know, which is Create Space and maybe Ingram Sparks, and let Kindle get through its learning curve. I, and, um, they, do the, the, they do a great job with the eBooks, but when it comes to the publishing, I know when I checked a f couple months ago, they were still struggling with that. So Yeah. 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 But you definitely want to check with Ingram. You won't get as big as a royalty, but you'll get more recognition. Yeah. So. As I've, I've heard of the name oh, for the last few years, uh -huh. but I always thought they were like a, like a book baby type of company mm. where they do the well, not really all the way through. No, they're connected to a lightning source, which is a print on demand. They own lightning source. So that's where if you go with Ingram Spark for distribution and you order books through them, it'll be printed through lightning source. But Ingram is the distribution end of they're like a Baker and Taylor. Ingram Sparks and Baker and Taylor are the two largest in the world for distribution. And that you need that distribution. And that's the only reason why I would say you definitely need to go with them because the royalties will be less. But you know, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your book. If you want to get recognition and get in some of the stores um, when you go to do your signings, you definitely want to you want to have a distributor. That's right. See, yeah. Even though even though Create Space does distribution, they're not a distributor like Ingram Spark. To give you an example, with with Create Space, which is Amazon, they only charge forty percent markup to the retailers. But at the same time, you're not going to be in their system to have to come in if you want to do book signings. And the reason for that is the retailers want a bigger markup. With yeah. Ingram Spark, the markup is 55%. So you're actually giving away 15% more. Big difference, yeah. But yeah. it's a give and take because if you want your books in the store and you want to be able to go in and do signings, you have to kind of register with them as well. Because I know for certain, Barnes & Noble doesn't like to order through Amazon because of that reason. They prefer to have it through Ingram where they can go in and order it and have that 55% markup. And by the way, you don't take books into the store if you're doing a signing with them and they order for you. They do consignment sometimes. It depends on the store you're with. Do they have Barnes & Nobles in Great Britain? Sorry? Do that? they have the Barnes & Nobles there in Great Britain? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just check with your events, the events coordinator there with the store and find out how they do it. They do consignments once in a while in some of the stores, not as often as they used to because they're restricted on how many they can do a year. But if you do a consignment, you can bring your books in. But you want to be listed, though. You, you definitely want to have that credibility. So go to Ingram Sparks and register your book. I'll get on to that one, definitely. All right. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, if you do that, you're going to have to give up some of the distribution with Amazon. And, you know, when you go in there, you, you, what you do is you call Amazon or you call Ingram Spark, and they'll talk you through it and how to set it up. So you don't, that way you'll be listed with both. So I've got to obviously provide the, uh, the files to ISBN. Yeah, the, so they, yeah, yeah, and they can take but care of it. Let me give you a little clue here what you can do. If you call Ingram Spark, 
Tell them you want to transfer the files from Amazon to them for international distribution. They'll send you a form that you fill out and send it in to um, Amazon or CreateSpace. And CreateSpace will send them that file, and you don't have to recreate your book. They, they'll automatically transfer those files for you. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is something. <laughs> one, yeah. less, one less step. So it saves you a little bit I of work. I hate these things. Yeah, yeah. So that'll <laughs> save you some work. But, yeah, it's just a little form you fill out, giving them permission to get the files from Amazon. And that might be what you're saying. I haven't checked it out in a couple of months, but that might be why what you're saying is happening with Amazon in that they're not doing maybe as much of the distribution as they used to because they're working hand-in-hand hand now with Ingram. It behooves them to do so because people usually list with both. I know I do. So, you know, I can see them working together on that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I would say it was just the third party uh, where I've heard it from, so... It may have sort of lost a little bit in the conversation. Well, I'm sure. going to go check it out now for sure because I've got – Wrong as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But obviously it's just a little bit of information that um, – I would be amazed if Amazon gave that up though. But you never know. So, you know, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, definitely check out Ingram. Um, and Amazon doesn't mind. Like I said, I've done it numerous times. I've called them. They've transferred the files. It's not a big deal. Um, right. And there are certain things, when you get ready to do that, just let me know, and we'll communicate, and I'll give you some ideas on how exactly how, how to do that. All right, so now you got the books out there. What are you doing for marketing? Uh, Facebook, obviously, is the, is the, the first one. Okay. Um, all, all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Snap. Snapjack, snap words. Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing any book signings? <laughs> yeah. You are. Uh, it's. I'm, I tell you what, I am finding very, very hard. Okay. Is to get people to to. Uh, I wanted to go into schools and read read the books, uh -huh. you know, uh, and into shops and and do a, a signing or whatever. Right. But, I don't know. Just people don't seem to want it. Whether okay. I'm saying the wrong thing or uh, no, perhaps. no, no. It's what I told you. It's listing it with the distributor. You've got to have that listed with the distributor, which is Ingram Sparks. So if I promise you, it will change. That whole dynamics will change if you have that listed. Because oh, right. what happens is when you go into a bookstore, you literally sometimes if you just call them while you're talking to them, they're on their computer looking for you. Yeah, and they'll literally say, "Oh, I just found your book on the internet, or I just found your book in our in our in our um, archives, or wherever." You know, so once you're with Ingram Sparks, you're going to be listed with these major chains, and they're going to be able to find you on the computer, and they're going to know that you can be distributed, that your books can be distributed through them, and that's yeah. why because they're now when they go in, they may see you on Amazon, but they don't see you through the same distribution channel as if you went through Ingram. And that's, that's why, because they're not going to order the books from Amazon. They're not going to get enough markup to want to do that. And the other thing is, is on the back cover of your book, do you have your barcodes and everything? Yes, yeah. Okay, because that's very important. You want to make it look very professional. You've got to have your ISB in there with... Uh, uh, let's see. Can you see that? Can you see that? Uh, other side. Yeah, move it over a little bit. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah, you've got it. Yep. Yeah, that looks good. So, you know, that's what they look for is that barcode to make sure you got your ISBN listed and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, that's, that's my grandson, Farmer Riley. I ah, like him. okay. So, yeah, you're doing the right things. I think you'll find if you list your book with a distributor uh, like Ingram, you'll get a little bit further. Then when you go yeah. in and talk to someone at the store, they're going to be able to pull your book up and see it's in their, in their system. Mm-hmm. So the other thing you might want to do is uh, it's a little bit of money. It's like 60 bucks actually. Um, you might want to list it with Ingram because now you're in their catalog. So for certain, you've got credibility with the bigger stores because you'll be in their catalog. Uh, so that might be something you might want to consider as well. Yeah. Uh, now, you know Pat Ritter. So you know what Pat does. He sends out yeah. a page a day of his books. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever think about going out and enticing people by sending one or two pages of your story at a time? Then the next week, send out another page or two of your story. Uh, yeah. What I was, was I've been considering, 
um, is writing part of the story onto social media like Facebook, like mm-hmm. LinkedIn or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just let them have that little bit, that snippet. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. ju- just to let it go, you know, and, and try and get people um, interested right. from, from that sort of, sort of game. Unfortunately, James, what, what tends to happen because my back gives me a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I end up having two or three days of can't do anything and then a day of start to work yeah but right. unfortunately as well um i i suffer with uh, depression quite a lot you know well that's day. probably from the medication yeah, yeah and that's you know, that is so understandable and and i truly i had back yeah. surgery so i have been in your situation i was in pain 24 hours a day so i get it and you're right it does stifle the uh, uh, creativity end of it but on the days that you can focus, you really need to focus and yeah. do your best on that day to get as much done as possible. If you could just spend a few hours a week um, going out there and doing what we're talking about, like four to six hours a week, I think you'd be amazed at how much difference that would make in getting your, yeah. you know, your yeah. book out there. And doing yeah. radio shows, you know, like doing this show, doing other shows. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> you know I, I'm so grateful to you for bringing me on to your show. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad to have in you. In this country, you know, I try to do it with our local radio station, and I don't want to know the local TV show. You know, they get all the the uh, um, authors on that's got the agent backing them and the sure. PR right. stuff. But somebody like myself, you know, I I don't know how to approach it all and what have you. Okay, well, so, let me give you some clues on what you need to do when you're approaching them. First of all, on your website. You're going to list that you are on this show, and right. you will have a link that goes to this show. Right. That yeah. gives you credibility. Yep. Every time you do a book signing, you have an advance calendar on your web page, on the one on, on WordPress, and you list the events that you've done. And if you, you don't have them on there now, go back and put them on there, you yeah. know, the book signings that you've done. Uh, all that's credibility. You know, when you do a radio show, when you, you um, do a newspaper interview, or anytime you, you do a book signing, you want all that on your website. So yeah. you want to make sure and go and do that. Secondly, I always tell people when you're going to do anything, especially when it comes to a book signing, dress the part. So yeah. when you go yeah. out there, think, I am the author. What would an author look like? And if you think about authors on TV that we see, Think about how they dress, what they look like. And that's what you want to emulate. You want to make sure that you go out there looking the part. Yeah. Um, because I'm going to tell you right now, and, and, and this is I've been doing this a lot of years. I've seen authors go out there with an old, um, what is that called? Just like a pullover shirt, stained yeah. and everything else. Right. And people won't approach you. They won't. So, you know, that's another thing, you know, keep in mind. When you're going out there and doing those signings, look the part of the author. You right. have to do it. Yeah. Put, yeah. the, put the shirt and tie on, even if you don't put a coat on. Put the shirt and tie on. You know, you want to do that. Yeah. So yeah. that's very important, um, how you present yourself. You just sat at home today, by the way. <laughs> well, no, that, we're, you're on. You're home, yeah, you're you didn't casual. even know we were going to do this, so that's fine. Right. The other thing is, as I want to tell you, is, is um, when you're at these book signings, you have to be able to talk. You have to be able to stand there. Don't. I know in your case you may have to sit, but... Jan sits when she does hers, and she, but she's an exception because <laughs> I, she's still I got the gift. She still got the gift to Gab even yeah. when she's sitting there. She goes, hey, "Hey, come here! Hey, you over there looking at that book? Come yeah, over and look yeah, at mine. Yeah. Get over here!" But you know, you do have to have the ability to to talk and get people to come over to your table. You can't just right. sit there, um, and you don't want to be talking to anyone else. Like if your wife's there, or you have other family members there, yeah. or friends. You don't want to be just standing there talking to them because right. you have to be waiting for those people to walk through that door. And when they walk through that door, you get their attention. You have that book in your hand and you're holding it up. And one of the things I found that helps with authors as well, when I do events and I help other authors with their events, and this is where maybe your wife could come in handy or a grandchild, I have bookmarks that you would give out with each book. But what I do is I stand outside the door. I stand outside on the sidewalk and every person that's walking through that door, I say, would you like a free bookmark for your book? Yeah. Some will say no, and it's a little nerve-wracking at first, but 
you get used to it. But some will say no, but I find the majority do take it because you say right. it's just a free yeah. bookmark. If they yes. take it, then you say, just so you know, this author is inside. If you want to stop and talk to him, he'd be glad to talk to you about it. Right. You yeah. don't have to push them, you know, right. about it. Like, you got to go talk to the author. No, just say if you'd like, you know, but this is his free bookmark. And if you would like to talk to him, he's right inside. He can talk to you about this story. Right. It's very effective to do that, to always have someone there to help you out. Yeah. So really. think about I've, all that. I've only actually done one, <coughs> excuse me, um, one reading, if you like, uh -huh. to the local infant school, local junior school, actually, it was. Uh -huh. um, again, it took me almost 18 months to get the the head to agree to it, you know, because of all the checks that they have to do now with all this, you know, the, the um, quality checks to right. make sure you're not messing around with kids and what have you. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, myself and my wife went over. Um, we didn't get a lot of time. It's just basically it was on and I read a couple of pages and I asked a couple of or I let the kids ask me the questions and told them about the books and how it was and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, I, I'd, I'd love to do it, but I just can't get, you know, in that front door, if you like. Right. Well, that's, that's, I found that very, very hard and disappointing a lot as well. Okay. But I, from this point forward, we're not going to be disappointed. And I'm going to tell you why. I always look at look at things this way. I used to be that way too. And now I look at it like, you know what? If this door closes, I'm going to find another one I can open. Right. And and I'm very persistent in many ways, and so I don't stop. And I may get 100 no's, but I'm looking for that one yes. Yeah. So that's all you've got to do. But never be afraid to go back and revisit places you've been as well. If you went to a Barnes & Nobles and they told you no, list, listen to what I told you now. List, list that book with Ingram. And once it's in their system, you go back right. to them and you tell them it should be in your system. And then they'll look right. and, and they'll see that it is. And I, I promise you it'll make a little bit of difference in trying to set up a book signing. Excellent. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, the thing is, is they always book these like a month or two out. So you're never going to get one within a week or two of when you want to do it. So just always right. realize that when you go to these bookstores, they're going to be booking you a month or two out. Yeah. The other thing is go to the local, the small independent chains or the small independent stores. Um, yeah. In Las Vegas, we have quite a few now. For a long yeah. time, they were down to almost none. None. And now they're they're blossoming. You know, yeah. we're getting quite a few now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're uh, very open to letting you do book signings. There's only an odd, odd little secondhand bookstores, really. Yeah. In a lot of the big books, uh, a lot of the big bookstores are gone. Unless they're in the big towns like exactly. Manchester, yeah, yes. you know, same in the, here in the big cities, like where we are, it, it, there's just nothing. Well, the know? only one we have in town here is Barnes and Nobles, right? Right, of the big board, of the, the big ones, yeah. yeah. The big ones. But we have quite a few small ones now that have popped up. Yeah, yeah. And so go to those. We have what we have. What's called um, coffee in a book. There's a young lady named Vicki Ann Bush yeah. who created Coffee in a Book. And what she does is she goes around to the coffee houses, and she sets it up to where every month there's a different author at a different coffee house. Um, and they rotate their authors, and they go there, and they present their books at the coffee houses. Sometimes they do readings. Yeah. They go to the libraries. They do book signings at the libraries. Um, restaurants. There are, there's one guy in particular, John Moore. He had does dinner with John D. Moore. Yeah. And uh, he wrote a book called Goodfellows. And he basically invites the people in. They come in. They have their dinner. The restaurant loves it. It fills their dining room. And he maybe does a reading or two. And then he yeah. stands there afterwards like he's the big star that he is and shakes their hands and signs their books. So yeah. you can get really creative and find different ways of going out there and getting your book out there. Obviously, yeah. you could even go around to the daycare centers. Yeah, again, yeah. I've, I've thought about that. It's, it's approaching them um, correctly, basically, is is my uh, hold up. You know, confidence issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's know, to, tough. To go in and, and sort of ask is is not me really. You know. Yeah, you know um, what? That's not me either. But I'm learning. I have to do it. Yet last week I had yeah, this. I mean, yeah, I have, have an event coming up, and and I I always want to have someone help me and. 
Unfortunately, the two people who were going to help me, they got sidetracked because of things that happened in their life. And so I thought, you know what? I set aside my time to do this. I'm going to go do it anyway. So I went to the first one, and I have to tell you, the first one was a great reaction. So I, that gave me enough gumption to go to the second one, and then that one was okay. Then I went to the third. They didn't say yes, but they didn't say no either. Yeah. So the main thing is, is you're there. You give them a card. You let them know who you are. You make sure they've got all the information where they can contact you back. And um, you never know what will happen. You never know who's going to call you. And I've always found that when I give up on someone and say, ah, they're never going to call me, uh, invariably that's when they call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like last night, I thought I'd lost lost you. Really, you know, I thought I'd missed it. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I wouldn't let you give up. There's no way I would let you give up. So no, 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 no. I, and I like having. I, I this show is different than most shows that talk to authors. I like having guests on like you, because yeah. you are an author and you are published. But you're still trying to find your way. And that's what right. this whole show is about, is trying to help authors. It doesn't matter whether you're a seasoned author or a novice. If you're a novice, you have a lot to learn. If you're seasoned, you can share that information with the people who are trying to learn. And that's why oftentimes I'll have more than one or two guests on, because I'll try and have someone on who's seasoned and someone who's new, right. so that we can help that person in and, and, and trying to achieve what they're trying to do. There's a thousand books published a day. So yeah. the competition is fierce. Right. So, you know, the more tools you have in your belt and the more knowledge you have about what you're doing, the better. But you do have to become a business person. That's the hardest part, and it was for me as well. You have to turn into a business person after that book is published. And by the way, you don't have to do it all yourself. If you don't have the gumption to go in and, and, and talk to someone, get your wife to do it or get a grandkid to do it or get a son or daughter to do it. You know, they can help you do this as well. It doesn't have to be just you, um, you know, because you're the author. Sometimes it's even better if someone's representing you to say that, you know, um, my grandfather or my father wrote this. And it really does help sometimes when someone makes that call for you. Yeah. Uh, I have someone who there are people I would never dream about ever being on the show, Jane, you've gotten a couple good people on the show for us from people you know from the job you had. Right. And then um, I have a, another person, Barry, who he'll just email someone. Yeah. I, I'm always amazed when just a simple email that he sent out gets right. someone's attention. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm no different than you. Now, you think that I went through a lot of trouble to make sure you stayed on the show, but I also go out there and I do the same thing you have to do to get the authors on my show. Yeah. He's got to call and talk to them. I call, talk to them. I got to get a hold of PR people and find out who their authors are. Emails. Know, emails. So you just, it's, it's, it's the same yeah. for me as it is for you. I've just been doing it a little bit longer. That's all. I'm going to recommend, though, that you become the James Bond of authors, getting them out there to be seen. You, you've yeah. got to pretend you're somebody else <laughs> and not who you are. And, and I'm sure my wife would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I would even go to senior centers and introduce yeah. your book to grandparents who might want to yeah. get a gift for their grandkids. Yeah, we actually You're have, not. We have someone who does that. He yeah. goes around to all the senior citizens, citizen centers, the, the senior assisted living, yeah. and he actually does book signings with various authors. It doesn't right. matter what you wrote. They're all interested. That's right. You know, and, and every. Most everybody has grandkids or nieces, nephews, and so forth down the line, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that everybody is your audience. Understand that everybody is your audience. Right. And yeah. getting a Thanks. book into the hands of a child just sets us up who write adult literature for our success. So your success makes our success. So get out there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you'll be amazed if, if you just go out there and give it a try how it won't be as difficult as you think. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for that. Well, we're going to put your we're going to put your information on the website so yeah. people will know that you're going to be on our show for a whole week. I'm going to send you some links so you can, you know, let people know about those links to where they can go and listen to your show. Right. We're also going to give you links once it's posted, once the show is actually posted you know, to be aired, where you can go and share that on your Facebook or whatever as well. 
Yes. So we'll help you get some, some publicity out there. And don't worry about making people upset by posting it three, four, five times in a week. Yeah. Well, yeah, you should post it once a, once a day probably. Yeah. Don't do it at the yeah. same time every day. Do it in the morning, do it in the afternoon, do it in the evening, but at, right. each day do it at a different time. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you both very, very oh. much for your help and advice. It's been, been brilliant. Well, we're, oh, it's been we fun. are actually down to the last minute of the show. So, wow. So it's Christopher Lakin, L-A-K-I-N. I said correct. Larkin, but it's Lakin. And um, your, your series is based on Captain Griswold. They're available on Amazon.com um, and on your website, which is ChrisLakinAuthors.wordpress.com. Is that correct? Yeah. Or at WordPress.com. So Chris Lake and authors uh, at WordPress.com. At WordPress.com. Right. Yeah. So, and one of the books is Who's Who on the Crew, The Coal Eaters. And what was the, the third one? A trip to? A trip to Lowbruff Market. Okay. L-O-W-B-R-U-F-F. Okay. Lowbruff Market. <laughs> All right. And then you, you have the, the other one. What was the, the, the fourth book? It's my, my grand's, grand's garden. garden. Yeah, my grand's garden. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's the plum job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this has been All a right. plum job today, I'll yeah, tell you. It's ya. been fun. All right. So I'd like to thank Christopher uh, Lakin and Janet Corsi for being on the show today. And Jan, you can be found at JanetCorsi.com. Yep. Okay. And, and you, Amazon. You'll be able to find the video of this show on YouTube.com. Just go to youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing once it airs. And then you can also go to aspectsofwriting.com and to learn more about this show and who our guest, past guest was and our next or forthcoming our guest. Next right. Guest. So there you also find links to the syndicated show on iHeartRadio, iTunes Radio, Roku TV. We broadcast live on amfm247.com at 1 o'clock on Saturdays, Saturdays at specific standard time. Yes. And all the links to our different outlets are on the Aspects of Writing uh, website. So just go there, and you'll see little pictures, and you can click on those, and it'll take you to those sites. Right. Um, in addition, we're now on Blog Talk Radio on Sundays at 9 o'clock in the evening, and there's a link on my website for that as well. And all the shows are archived on Aspects of Writing on the Archive tab. Yes. You, there's the audio that will... So your show will be archived on there, Chris, once it's aired. It'll be on that Archive tab. In addition, yeah. for a whole week, we actually have the YouTube link there. It's right. archived on our front page. Uh, so until next week, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding yeah. you, if you can dream it, you can write it. Again, Chris, thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice to meet you both. Nice thank to you. meet you. Bye. Bye. Bye.